everyone. My name is Bianca Trinkenreich, and I'm going to talk. I'm from Northern Arizona University. I'm going to talk about a survey that we are conducting, and I'm going to call you to answer that. So let me. Yeah. So who am I? I identify as a woman. I am a Brazilian. Yes, I'm from Rio de Janeiro, from Brazil. I am a mom. And my five years old daughter is right, right here getting ready to school. Uh, I have bachelor and master's in computer science in Brazil, have 20 years in industry and worked in many companies uh, as an open source user. Then in 2019, I decided to move to the US in order to have my PhD in Northern Arizona University and in a beautiful city that you can see here in the end, it's Flagstaff with a lot of mountains and cold and snow, very different from Rio de Janeiro. From, for those who know Rio and know uh, Flagstaff, the Route 66, it's quite a change. And yes, I came here to study open source and diversity inclusion, human factors involved in, uh, behind the decisions that uh, people have to participate in open source. So I'm here studying with Igor, professors Igor Steinmacher and, and Marco Genosa, who are already researchers in the open source area for many years, and also collaborating with Professor Anita Sarma from the uh, Oregon State University and Professor Daniel German. Uh, who is also a member from the Linux Foundation. And now we are working on a very interesting project to increase diversity in Linux kernel. So we are going to use evidence from the current contributors to support the strategies that we are planning to design to increase and retain a diverse set of contributors. Why that? Because we understand that the community needs to be heard. We need to listen to what the community has to say, why the contributors participate, how they perceive success, as I'm going to explain further, uh, like uh, using the success definitions as future goals. How do contributors feel they belong to the community? What challenges, and this is very rich, what challenges do the, the contributors face and what would make them leave? because we want to understand first, this is the first step, we want to understand the current contributors, we are also going to listen to the contributors who left, and then this is going to give us a holistic understanding about how to increase diversity in the Linux kernel. So uh, this presentation is a call to action, so if you are a Linux kernel contributors, a contributor, please help us we need to hear your voice and please help us answering the survey until the September 2nd, because I'm going to present some preliminary results this Friday during the conference. Okay, so I have here the QR code for the, the survey and I ask you to please help us to hear your voice. <laughs> and uh, it, this, is, this is mean anywhere in the world. So September 2nd, anywhere in the world, I'm going to close the, um, the survey, okay? So I'm going to analyze data on September 23rd, and then I'm going to present some uh, results to you on September 24th, right? During the diversity inclusion, um, Microconference. Well, the questionnaire is completely voluntary. There is no obligatory answers. It has mainly three parts, which the first one is motivation. Why do you contribute? The second one is about the contributions you are already doing to the Linux kernel. And the third part is about gender diversity in Linux. The final part is demographic. And I ask you to please, please don't lose this part. Don't leave this part behind because we use demographics to do some segmented analysis. So I can understand the phenomenon through different lens. So I can understand per country, what is happening, per gender, and, and per the other factors of demographics. So seem, uh, I, I, I know when you are answering in the final part, you say, oh, this is not important, but it is. It's very important for us. So please, please also answer the demographic. 
It takes approximately 10 minutes to answer, and we are not going to show your data. This is completely anonymous. The data is going to be aggregated, and we are not going to show any names. We ask for uh, your emails and contact only, we, only if you want to be contacted further for interviews, which are the next step. But none of the data is going to be uh, used. Okay. And the first factor, okay, motivation. Motivation has been frequently studied topic in software engineering, frequently. Uh, the literature shows that a proper management of motivation and satisfaction helps the organization to achieve a higher level of productivity. So it's very important. And the largest research in open source motivations has been done uh, around 10 to 20 years ago. Last year, we have visited the old motivation studies and we use it. Uh, uh, let me see the, the chat. We use it, uh, a new survey using the, the old questions to understand what shifted from the 20 years ago to today. Because the world has changed a lot, the motivations that drive open source contributors also changed, and we wanted to understand uh, three shifts. So the shift of motivation that happened 20 years ago, also the shift since joining, because we can join because of, of one reason and stay before because of another reason. So we can we can have different motivations since the beginning that we joined it until now that we are contributing. And we also analyzed the shift for a diverse set of contributors using the demographic. Yeah. So we found that now uh, a very re relevant difference is that intrinsic motivations like fun, kinship, altruism, deeply liking joining others, now we are now are playing a very relevant role for. Uh, for contributors. We also saw that reputation and career can motivate more than payment for the responses, the respondents that we have. And also that social aspects are now rocking. People want to collaborate, people want to do social good. And that people can shift from extrinsic, like having been paid, to intrinsic motivations after staying there. Uh, this survey was done with many communities. Some of the respondents were from Linux, but we had also Debian, Kubernetes, LibreOffice, Firefox, and many others. Okay, and then we are going to use concept of this, this, this study on, on the current survey. So you are going to see a question, it's the first question about how important are those reasons for you to contribute to Linux kernel? So why do you contribute? What is more important to you? Is that hobby, like I have fun when I contribute? Is that I'm, I, I, join, I join it and I see career, a career development? I, I'm contribute because I'm getting paid, I'm selling products, I want to enhance my reputation, I want to be famous, or I was asked, do a coursework, for example. Oh no, I am, I am motivated by the, the, the philosophy. Like, uh, I believe that source code should be open, I believe in open source, and this is my main motivation. Or also collaboration and kinship. I like to collab collaborate, I deeply enjoy uh, helping others, which is a part of altruism. So we consolidated the, the 11, the 11 groups of motivations into only four, so it's easier for you to, to answer. And we give all those um, examples of questions inside them, so you can, um, you can mark if it's, you, if it's very important to you until the not important to you, each of them. Okay. Uh, and what is next? Okay, you join because of a reason, you can shift after joining because of another reason and what do you want next? So I had a last study, the, my last study was about understanding success. When you understand what means success for someone, it makes a, it makes a lot of reasoning about what the person wants for the future. So 
Uh, we asked too many, to more than 200 uh, contributors for several, from several communities, what means success for them? What means success in, in it can uh, make a relation about what are you going to pursue for your future? So what do you think is success for you? Do you feel successful, either being or not? Think of about, think about a person you think is successful. So when you define success, you can have, we, you, we have to predict what are the contributors seeking for their future? Because people, uh, consciously or not, they try to achieve those definitions of success. So we use a model, an existing model from, from the HR that explains success in using four uh, quadrants and two dimensions. So we could find that uh, the open source, all the external uh, definitions were from open source and the model was inside the square. So we, can under, we could understand that open source contributors could uh, understand success more from an interpersonal uh, view, which is related to what also people uh, think about that, but from both affect, which is the perceptions and feeling and achievement. And how are we using this here in the survey? Well, how can we use the, this concept of success? A community can, can understand that it's necessary to create meetups, hackathons, or summer of code events for people who perceive success as collaboration, as cooperation, because they want to be together with others. People can also, the communities can also create hours for code contributors or also for non-code who also, who will help to, with questions for those who understand that success is recognition. The communities can create many strategies to support the perceptions of success and avoid people to have the success somewhere else. How are we using this in the survey? We are gonna ask you a question. Uh, before, if you perceive yourself, do you think you are a successful contributor? If yes, I'm going to ask you, what, what makes you feel successful? I am successful because I collaborate, because I bring contributions, because I cause an impact, because I make a living, I earn money from open source, because I have fun, I like to contribute, or if you if you answer that, that you don't feel successful, I'm going to ask you another, but similar question. I would be successful if I, and then all the options. So uh, I am seeking, we are seeking to, to have from you the definitions of success, even if you feel successful or still not. What is next? Next is sense of belonging. Do you feel you belong to the community? There are many uh, ways of asking that and understanding this sense, this sense of belonging concept. And then we are going to ask you, how do you feel about the subsystem that you contribute to? Oh, I feel that people know me, I don't feel at home, the majority know me. So there are six questions about sense of belonging that with a liquidity uh, scale that you can since they would strongly agree until they strongly disagree, and you can help us to understand how do you belong, do you feel you belong to the team, okay? Then about incentives. We know that the Linux kernel and many other open source contributors have a mix of paid and voluntary contributors. So we start asking you, have you been ever, ever in any time of your life being paid to contribute to Linux kernel? Yes or no? But when you, when you answer yes, I'm going to ask you, when have you been paid to contribute? Only when the, in the first contribution, I have been paid to pay in the past, but not anymore. And I'm currently being paid to contribute. And then I will ask you about your future possible <laughs> decisions. If you were no longer sponsored or paid to contribute, what would you do? Would you, keep, would you keep quit? Would you leave? Would you find another employee? Would you use your spare time, your own time, as a volunteer to do what? To do new code? To maintain the code you have already produced? 
to help in the community efforts. So if you see, I am trying to understand your possible future decisions here regarding losing the incentives that you may possibly have are receiving now. Then there are some questions about um, taking breaks. Have you ever taken a break from Linux contributing? Have you ever stopped contributing for six months, for example, and then you came back? And then what is very interesting for me to know is why did you decide to come back? Because we want people around. We don't want to lose anyone. And what challenges did you face? And then it is, this is open. You can write anything you want. And we are going to, to, qualitative, to do qualitative analysis on that. Why, what challenges, what difficulties, what barriers in any, any types that you faced. This is very rich and we really want your contribution on that. And also, do you know someone who left Linux kernel? And do you know why? What would be a reason to leave? We are going also to ask you about uh, the current strategies that Linux have to increase diversity. So there are some, some programs going on. And then we are going to ask you for each of those, are you aware that they exist? Are they effective to attract contributors? In your opinion, are they effective to retain contributors? So for each of those uh, existing programs, we are going to ask your opinion on that. Right, so we have already collected around the uh, 300 uh, answers to the survey. And so those are the, some examples of the demo demographic we, we have in this moment. They are not final because I'm still uh, collecting data. But from the demographic, we could see that most of the respondents co uh, are contributing uh, since the 2011, so more than uh, 10 years. Uh, they contribute less than four, four hours a week, not in, in the whole week. We also uh, have data about the types of contributions, so uh, how much of your time do you contribute to code? <laughs> to community management and documentation as part of your job of being, or being paid in as spare time as a volunteer. We can see that community management is being, at, until now, is being done more as a volunteer job than as a paid one. We also asked about when did you start contributing to Linux? Uh, uh, no, your age. And then most of the respondents have age between uh, 25 and 44 years old. The gender identity, and we are very interesting also in the minorities. So if you are, if you identify as a woman, as a non-binary, as a non-man, please, please help us. Uh, because most of the respondents uh, until now are men. So 85%, which is very um, attached to the, to the reality we have in open source. So in open source, we have uh, around 9 to 10% of women and other genders contributors. And it is a reality that we are working to change. The country of residence, we are also asking that, and please, please answer that, because it says a lot about the future. So we can understand the phenomenon uh, from many kinds of lands. Uh, most of the respondents until now are from USA, which is expected, from then Germany, China comes uh, in the third place. And then we are using this data also to analyze and uh, segment and analysis. And now we come to, um, to a part of the, the presentation that I want to hear you. So my first question is, from those who are here, which challenges, and then you can, you can choose to open your microphone, you can choose to, uh, to write in the chat, but let's interact. Uh, I have received well, already a bunch of questions, but I want to hear from you. Which challenges do you face and are more impactful to you now? 
in Linux kernel. Bianca, in the shared note, there's a question that's been added um, in the sense from Asama, which is, can community support new contributors to get full-time jobs in any way, and what are the possible ways? Do you want to tackle that, or do you want to go through your questions first? No, no, I can. I can. Let me see the question again. I, I didn't see the question. Can you please repeat, Kate? Sure. It's in the shared note tab on the left side. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. It says, um, can community support new contributors to get a full-time job in any way, and what are the possible ways? There are some some options, and, and thank you for your question, Ozan. So I'm going to repeat one once more, only for the YouTube uh, expectations. So can community support a new contributor to be paid to get full full-time job, which is like make a living from open source? Uh, if we see in the, and I, I thought it was very interesting that we have in the, the conference site some list of jobs. There are some jobs being posted for Linux contributor. So in companies that are uh, supporting the events also, so there are jobs for a Linux contributor to work in Amazon and IBM. So you can you can get a job in the in, in industry in, in positions that are seeking for Linux contributors. So you can have this knowledge and have this job there. And the community is supporting the contributor by putting those jobs on the conference side. And also the, con the community can, can make this awareness in a very uh, like current way. We can, the community could uh, put the jobs offering in the page. It's an idea. Do you have any other ideas? Kate, Shua, or other contributors, do you have any other ideas? Because the partnership with industry is uh, is very strong. <laughs> and uh, we're getting someone typing in the notes. Um, Many, uh, basically, someone uh, Wolfram saying uh, many companies scan the lists uh, for new contributors mm -hmm. to reach out. So I guess in that sense, the community is engaged as well. Mm -hmm. um, and companies are engaging and looking for new participants when they need those types of roles. Obviously, I think there's you know elements of support that happens by mentoring. Um, we heard a bit about that from Mad Dog yesterday. Uh, and so the mentoring as, and the community volunteers to do the mentoring, they're not being, you know, paid at this point to mentor. So I think that in that sense, the community is helping new contributors uh, find new jobs. Well, to answer, you know, the question. Um, so we've, got, and we've got another question that's come in from Andrew. Are there any companies that show it, uh, success in improving their gender diversity on their kernel? kernel team? I don't have this data yet, but it um, makes a lot of, of sense to investigate because... The... <laughs> So I don't have this data yet, but as we we see that the companies are hiring for positions, the developers in Linux kernel, I think our project is also contributing to that. So the Linux kernel itself needs to be more inclusive to then help inclusivity of the companies, right? Let's see if we have any other questions, then we can go the mountain scale. So, yeah, so what we've got is um, Wolfram's commenting in, my biggest challenge is maintainer scaling problem. Things like maintainers cleaning up old code and so forth. I am still reading what is, is being written, but it, um, 
it's very connected to the challenges that I have already. I am still analyzing from the data that we have and I'm reading the challenges and I could see that maintainers are overloaded and this is very, very connected to what you're saying. The, so the maintainer scaling problem is like the maintainers uh, are being overloaded with a lot of work. Some of them are not being paid, not all of them, but some of them are not being paid, but even the, even the paid one are feeling overloaded. And we, we have more data about that. I'm going to talk about this on Friday. Uh, but I, I would uh, ask you all, if you can, please answer the survey because I am collecting this data and there is a lot about the maintainers. So being overloaded and some conflicts that happen, which I'm going to present further on Friday, but like Shua was saying, the mentorship programs have a, help to give a good start to new developers. Yes, it's like training. So the community, the community is contributing to, to create, to have new maintainers. So, but it's like a lettering. We need to get there. The people need to be trained and people need to be first interested. People need, people need to be interested to be there. Then being trained, then contribute, making contributions, then becoming maintainers. This is not a thing that is going to happen like this. And this is why uh, inclusivity programs are so uh, important. Because if we don't attract new people and then we train them, how people are going to be there? So there are many, many developers in the world. And if we need to attract, we need to be inclusive and welcoming. So this is one of the challenges. Do any other challenges do you want to share with us? So which challenges do you face? and are more impactful like the one about the maintainer scaling how can we mitigate those challenges like shua is is showing here the mentorship programs any other challenges you face do you recommend anything because we are seeing shua here answering but you do you recommend that kernel community do anything else to have more contributors who are in gender minority or another one for those who are already there what advice do you have for other contributors who are willing and trying and interested to contribute to those kernel advices for those who are already there do you have any advices would you share, <laughs> for example, resilience? What else? Technical? I like the challenge about the, the maintainer scaling because it's very connected to what we are seeing. Uh, do we have any more maintainers in the room who want to talk with us? Do we have people who are not contributing yet, but are interested <laughs> to join? So let's, while we're sort of, you know, waiting to see if other people sort of chime in, um, mm -hmm. AJD is saying, you know, repeating the question is, you know, are we seeing that there are certain companies that have been um, effective at um, having success at improving the gender diversity on their kernel teams? Um, I'd say I've seen Intel um, be very much, I've seen anecdotal stuff, but we don't have anything that's hard. Um, but, you know, I, I and I, but I've been mostly not observing on the kernel so much as in some of related projects right now. 
um, but you know, the, we're seeing some companies specifically go and target to get and hire um, new developers and you know, groom them up. But I don't know, we don't have actual stats right now on who specifically, but I have seen initiatives in the past from Intel, from VMware, uh, from some of the sponsoring companies for this conference, for instance, um, that they would like to see these types of things improved. There's actually a lot of, um, you know, the companies are trying to figure out how to do this. Um, I just, we don't have any data on specific to the kernel team. On Friday, there's more of some of the survey results that will be going across companies, but we don't have any data, but it's not been segmented down into the kernel side of, you know, what's kernel specific as opposed to just the company's initiatives in general for open source work. So that's an area that um, certainly the help for those who can fill in the survey would be welcome um, from this group if they've seen things and you know feel free to put in comments of where you know that there's some good examples that you don't want to mention something here. Um, Andres also commenting in the chat saying I was mentored into the kernel and now trying to help people at my university to get to kernel hacking. The hardest part to mentor people uh, in the kernel is to find the beginner tasks. That's a good piece of input. It is. Yeah. Um, I know that the um, ELISA project, for instance, as a group that is focused on helping people starting into contributing and trying to help with some of the cleanup of the kernel um, as part of learning the process. And so groups like inside a university or groups within you know, other projects that are working with the kernel, forming groups and forming peer groups, um, so that people can bounce things off of each other in a peer setting, I think tends to be helpful as well. Oops, <laughs> Greg um, is chiming in saying, saying drivers slash staging slash star to do are a huge list of beginner tasks. So I, <laughs> I think for those who are for them, I think that's a good one. Yeah, and Andre is saying we first had the first patch, it's usually a code style cleanup, right? But, you know, there certainly is a lot of um, areas, so maybe as Greg says, having more of the to-dos and making them a bit more visible sounds like something that would help. So the next step of, sorry, Kate. No, I'm just noticing Arnaldo you know, come off mute. So do you have some thoughts, Arnaldo, here? The next step of this, Arnaldo, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Arnaldo? No, no? I guess. It was a, it was a, it was sorry, I, I, it was a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no problem. But you're welcome to say anything. You're pretty welcome. And the next steps of this project is continuing receiving the answers that we are going to receive until the 22nd. Then we are going for interviews to deep analysis. We are also doing the segmented analysis to understand, to understand the intersectionality of the thing. So what is that? For example, uh, let me give you an example. Women can under can can face cannot face a challenge, but women from a certain country can face a specific challenge, which is cultural and also related to gender. It's not only cultural, not only related to gender. So the the intersectionality of the things is going to be analyzed, and then based on all those informations, we are going to start designing actions to mitigate the reported challenges, avoid contributors to leave, make the community as much uh, we can uh, welcoming and inclusive to other people and see the, the, the actions, see how the actions are helping to increase the numbers, to increase diversity and to make the community with more contributors, with diverse contributors. So it's like, some steps we are doing. We are also going to we are going to interview both current contributors and also um, look for contributors who left because we also need her their uh, understanding and the reasoning about why to delete. It's such interesting to understand all the perspectives of people who are in, people who are not anymore. Let me read here the chat. We are we still have some minutes, right, Kate? Um, going on there. 
mentor to get in the kernel and I'm trying to help people in my university. Uh, great, Andre. The hardest part is to find beginner's tasks and this is also appearing in the challenges. So we, we see a lot of social issues, but we also see uh, many uh, technical challenges, both from maintainers and from beginners. Uh, the Linux is, uh, has a complex code and I, and I understand it's, it can be hard to break into small issues for a beginner to start, but it's very important as most of the newcomers look for that tag of, like the tag of first time issue or good first issue. And when a project doesn't have this, it can be unwelcoming for newcomers. Uh, other question, I'm not great in keeping this. Subsystem, do anyone want to show up and ask something? Was mentor to get? Okay. Are there any comments? Sure, oh, I don't have the answer. One of the things I'm seeing from the chat is there does seem to be the maintainers have lots of to do lists. The challenge is there, everyone, some of them have it in their head and everyone seems to have it in different places and there's no tracking. Um, so it's hard for people probably to serve unless they reach out to the maintainer directly to get that and that takes maintainer bandwidth. So I'm sort of almost wondering from some of the comments we are seeing if um, in the chat, if there's ways that we can look at making um, these to-dos and first approaches. Um, yeah, organizing documentation process and list of uh, like responsibles is also appearing in the challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's related to the contribution process. It can be not, sometimes it can be not technical. It's just like process and it causes this overload you said, Katie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then I think, um, you know, some of these are going to require access to hardware that people don't have to, was the other point that was just brought up from the chat. It's an uh, infrastructure uh, problem, right? To yep. prepare the environment to contribute, which can be very challenging. Also to test. I don't okay. know if you, you feel that. We're also getting a comment um, from Jonathan that's saying, you know, first jobs are normally easy. Um, the stuff that really takes significant mentoring is the third plus contribution. The answer isn't obvious. Um, and Jonathan's also adding in, uh, feel free to contribute to the QMU emulation. It's also useful when you don't have the hardware. <laughs> okay. There's a link in also to kernelnewbies.org as well. Uh, Will's commenting, I think, you know, encouraging a broader diversity of contributors through mentoring, beginning tasks, and company hiring initiatives is crucial. However, <coughs> there's surely a need for commitment from the community to progress these new contributors so that they can grow beyond the tasks and become maintainers. Uh, for example, uh, the list of tab election nominees are all old men. With, an, <laughs> with a comment, sorry, Greg. <laughs> so um, a desire to see the more of the diversity at the tab level seems to be a factor here too, <laughs> at the leadership levels. Will, thank you for uh, thank you for your comment. This is very attached to the advancement, uh, so perceptions of success, and we we can we, and then if we want to advance, we need. To see like a clear criteria, right? How can we get there? Is it transparent? Yeah, there's a really good comment from Veronica here about the, on the challenges in the sense that the barrier of entry is fairly high. Everyone has an email address, but 99% of the people don't have an email set up that works because there's some rather strict rules about the emails coming into the patches. And so she was commenting last time I had to send a patch uh, to kernel 
uh, to kernel engineers um, and had to work for a few days at trying to figure out what the problem was. And this is after I'd already success, you know, submitted some patches successfully before. So it sounds like the infrastructure is getting in the way of contributors as well. It is in the process, like you need to send the patches through mailing list, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's also, um, you know, she's saying, commenting further that, you know, it's a turnoff for newbies to have to go and spend potentially days setting something up that should take about five minutes to fix. Well, well. Which gives us like a direction to, to the challenging that mentors have face. Why do they have long delays of answering? Are they overloaded? What's happening, right? Uh -huh. Or quite frankly, did they don't see it because the mail setup configuration wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So they never even saw it in the first place, which is frustrating. I agree. It is. And, and, so, and possibly we can get some not complicated actions to solve those kind of problems. So it's very interesting that we can see what is hurting because some actions can be quite simple, like communication. The, the, maintain, the, the person who is submitting a patch and the person who is reviewing the patch need to be able to communicate. This is infrastructure, it should, should be simple, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the, infra, the infrastructure part, and I know that the maintainer is overloaded, can, can have some delays to answer, but the infrastructure part, we can fix, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sam is just basically is responding to Greg saying he can't access the link <laughs> for um, the driver staging. Um, we really need to to hear your voice. So thank you for everyone who is putting the challenges here. I will ask you to please, please answer the survey. But I'm going to consider the challenges here too. Yeah. Applying to new contributors. So. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, and thank you, Edson. And Jonathan's saying if it's just maintainers replying to new contributors, that's also a problem. And, you know, I think one of the one things I'm wondering is, you know, how do we get those who've been maintained, who've just been mentored and so forth to pass it forward and help because they understand the problems firsthand better and probably are more effective mm -hmm. mentoring. But you know, I think building up that culture across is a, it's an interesting challenge because the maintainers don't scale. <laughs> I think we've seen that already. Yeah. So we need those who've been like, you know, um, active in the kernel for the first a year already, <laughs> being able to mentor the new people coming in and things like that. But we're still getting some good comments coming in on the typing. Yeah, you you want to spend your time doing the contribution, not figure out how to start contributing. This is very, very this is very good, Veronica. Thank you. It's like possibly we are not having a proper training material set for the newcomers, and they are overloading even more the maintainers with questions and questions and questions. So, yeah, um, there's also from uh, ADD. We need to see more social credit um, for ordinary developers to do code reviews rather than just writing patches. Oh yeah. So, you know, figuring out how to highlight those who are writing, you know, doing useful code reviews and things like that. And it's not, not only a code review, right? It's code review, it's answering questions in mailing lists. That's a lot of work. We need to recognize all of those. Many people do transition to helping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's bad enough to do that within companies, let alone on mailing lists. Yeah. Jonathan. Okay. Do any of you have any question about the survey itself or the project itself? Like, if you see, we are under, trying to understand a bunch of human factors that act behind the decision. 
we have a decision to participate or not. We have a decision to leave or stay there. And there are a lot of concepts behind this decision. So do you have any opinion? If you, any of you want to complement or say something? Well, so there's an interesting comment in um, the shared notes from Wolfram. I think, you know, I have a hack of the suggestion to Git, which praises reviewers and testers um, when I send out pull requests. Um, I couldn't get it into mainline Git, but contact me if you're interested. So it sounds like people have been, you know, coming up with ideas and prototypes and this type of, you know, ways of being more visible. I know certainly the signed off buys and the tested buys and review by tags are there to be used. And I think they've been counting in, you know, the, the credits towards, you know, voting for the tab and things like that. Um, we started sort of tracking some of that a bit more last year. I don't know if you have comments there on that side of it too. Uh, yes, okay, thank you. Uh, we have been, uh, um, uh, I think we are also, uh, Greg uh, is also uh, adding tester by tax to stable reviews, um, release uh, uh, testing as well. So we have been tracking that and that has been helpful also to um, to highlight some of the contributions that people make, not just the core contributions, in a lot of other ways people contribute to uh, the community, right? Um, because testing um, is a um, contribution that uh, at times um, doesn't get uh, credit, as much credit as it deserves. So that's one thing that, um, um, uh, thank you, Greg, for starting doing that, starting that last year, which is uh, a great way to um, uh, help people. That also starts as a, is, that is a good um, way to engage also, because when you test, you might find a problem. And when you find a problem, you might, um, that lends itself to fixing that problem. Um, so I think all in all, um, it, it, smaller steps to get engaged and get involved is helpful, definitely. And then uh, email um, is, I mean, it is a barrier. As uh, we mentored, we noticed it is a process for uh, new developers to go through to learn how to send a patch. And that's the start and then also explaining their patch. So some of the stuff that um, mentors um, as duty in the mentoring process that go through and implicit men mentoring that happens, uh, that's where the maintainer load comes in, uh, that implicit mentoring community does in helping developers, new developers get their patches right when they start sending, all of that does happen, but it does take a lot of bandwidth from, a, from contributors and maintainers. Mm -hmm. The other comments I'm seeing coming in are um, pointers to some of the work um, that various people are doing where they're doing live code reviews in the Arch Power PC space. Um, Daniel Axtens is being pointed out as an example that's useful. And then Will Deacon, and Will Deacon's also pointing out that Cases does, does this as well. And I, you know, I've heard of Cases, some of Cases stuff. So, you know, uh, as people are doing code reviews, just turning the camera on and sharing it with people helps people understand um, as low barrier. So some, maybe more of these types of initiatives. Um, might be worth considering. And one more thing is I put, put a uh, link to the live mentoring series that uh, webinar, um, that would be another good way. Um, uh, contact me if you, want, uh, if you want to do something like that, talking about your subsystems, especially maintainers and contributors, expert contributors in areas. Um, I'm looking to, to talk about specific um, subsystems so that people can learn uh, what it takes to be an expert in a particular subsystem and then also uh, maintaining that subsystem. So that's probably one way uh, to train um, to be a maintainer um, or what it, at least tell people what it takes to be a maintainer. Okay, well, so I think we're at the close to the five minutes. Did you have any further um, last comments? Um, Bianca, before we sort of queue things up for our next speaker. Now, I, I would thank you everyone for the participation here. We have uh, a lot of uh, in very interesting information here in the chat and also in the share notes. Thank you very much for participating. Uh, 
I will ask again to answer the survey. I will do my best to analyze in one day, in the 23rd, and I'm going to present you some interesting results in the 23. So please don't lose the diversity inclusion uh, session that we have on the 24th on Friday. Okay, then we can have uh, discussions about the results. So we can have discussion about data there. And it's coming from you, so thank you very much. Thanks, Bianca. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Shua, for the opportunity and for the collaboration. And I'm looking forward for the, our next steps. Yep, I think we can keep the conversation going in the chat too. Mm -hmm. so I guess Yank will be able to start typing back now. <laughs> there.